With us now is Marcus Ogden. Welcome to the show. How are you? How are you doing, Donna? Thanks for having me. I want to talk about one thing that so impressed me in your bio. You were raised by a single father. Yes. A little different. Yes. Our father raised us when uh, I was eight years old. My brother was 14. My parents divorced and my mom had to go and do her own thing. The only thing my father wanted was both his boys. He said, I want to raise my two boys to respect men, to respect women, to respect themselves and be good in the community. So that's where we are. And he's two for two. That's correct. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think you and your brother turned out pretty Not too bad. Yeah, yeah my brother, had, bad. <laughs> brother played in the NFL for 12 years. I played for six. Uh, my brother's married. I has three kids. I've been married now for a little over four years. I have two daughters. So life is good. So once you became, you both became NFL players, right. uh, both for different teams. Mm -hmm. um, when you realized that it looked like you're going to be making the pros, mm -hmm. how did that personally feel for you? It was exciting. Uh, I went to Howard University in Washington, D.C., wanted to be a financial advisor, work on Merrill Lynch in New York and on Wall Street. And when the NFL came calling, I was like, wow, this can be a reality. So I worked really hard with my strength coach, with my coaches at Howard, and I was drafted to the NFL by Jack Del Rio. But it was an amazing feeling to work that hard from high school all through college and then them say, wow, you can actually be an NFL athlete. So it was an amazing feeling. Now, did your high school put up a little plaque for you or anything? Did they celebrate you? Did they have like Marcus Ogden Day? <laughs> well, they don't have Marcus Ogden Day, okay. but, we, but yeah, it was nice to have like St. John's uh, recognize me for being, you know, in the NFL, uh, Sports Hall of Fame. So everything else has just been good. I mean, St. John's is a really great institution in Washington, D.C. Uh, Kevin Plank, who owns Under Armour, graduated from there as well. So this is a great school, great history, and I love being a St. John's cadet. Oh, I am so happy to meet you. Um, one of the things that I, uh, recognized about you when I was looking at all your bio and looking through your website is the fact that you are very, as I say, other-centered. And I love featuring people. You really care about the other person making a difference in their life. How are you going about that now through motivational speaking? I do a lot of speaking for organizations like uh, the Home Depot. I've done work for Axe Advisors, NFL Player Engagement. But I really love doing at my core okay. is creating value for people with my experiences so they can live their best life. People always say, I want to prove myself to somebody else. Well, in reality, if you don't try to prove yourself to people, if you just focus on creating value for people, you end up proving yourself to them in that right. So I love my speaking, executive coaching, geared around the foundation of treat the clients the best, do what they need done, and always service them as a servant leader. We try to do that here. We try to keep people well fed, well hydrated, <laughs> and happy. You know? The team, the crew, um, it's kind of like running this whole experience of the universe. So when people are here, there's a, you see, right? There's oh, absolutely. A lot of action and craziness going on. But at the end of the day, if I have made people's life a little bit brighter, um, if I have given some information from you or from somebody that I'm interviewing, and it makes a difference in the life of somebody in the audience, mm -hmm. changes their world, what better joy is that in the world? Oh, there is. Right? I mean, there's, there's so much negativity down in this world. Everyone wants to always be out for themselves. And in this world, if you have people who actually are bright and help others and shine that light of positivity, that's how you change the world. You can't change the world until you change yourself. True. So you have to be one who wants to help people, give advice, give value. Don't worry about what people can do for you. Focus on what you can do for them. And the life gets good after that. It gets really good. It does. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when you talk about um, trying to prove something. So when I was a little girl, I was bullied. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about it often here because mm -hmm. a lot of people have gone through that same challenge. Yeah. And I used to live my life like, oh, I'm going to be somebody someday. I'm going to be somebody someday. Well, then you kind of get to be somebody. Mm -hmm. And then you say to yourself, okay, well, now where's my motivation? <laughs> I've been living my whole life to get trying here. to prove something like I was good enough or whatever. But for the last decade or whatever, I've just been happy because now I have something to give other people. Well, you know? like you said, when you're just happy, living your best life, it radiates off of you. When you're not trying to prove yourself to other people or trying to live up to their standards, that's what happened to me. When I, le when I left the NFL, I became a very successful construction business owner for about five and a half years. Okay. I ended up going bankrupt because I trusted a client that I shouldn't have and I dropped my ball and I dropped my guard. So I ended up going bankrupt. When I was bankrupt in 2013, only six years ago, Everyone said, Marcus, go to football, go to football. Don't try to be a speaker. Don't try to be a coach. Like, just be okay with being 
average football coach for what you think you can do. I said, guys, you're trying to tell me how to live my life. Wow. I want to go out and help inspire people. I love football and I think football coaches are great. We need them in our society. But I wanted to do something more around just helping people with my experiences so they could avoid my catastrophic financial crisis. That's why I got started and it's been a long road works very hard, but I don't try to prove myself anymore. I talk to people about how I can add value to their organization, and when they see that, they're either speaking, coaching, consulting, I have a couple books, they're like, Marcus, we wanna work with you. It's interesting you talk about trust because our, our guest prior was just talking about trust. Mm -hmm. And in my career too, I trusted somebody that had a big, gigantic name. I mean, mm -hmm. superstar, A-lister, celebrity type of person. Sure, sure. Put my trust in them and almost took me completely down under. Mm -hmm. I mean, almost lost everything um, and had to rebuild from scratch again, mm -hmm. right? So you're right, it's, it's knowing who you can trust, believing in yourself, you know, waking up every day and just being the best you. So I can just tell, like, you're just so happy. You're doing great things in your life. Um, what is one tip? Where could somebody start? Where should they start if they need to make a change? If you want to make a change and a real systemic change, figure out what you do really well. What is your strength? And build off that. So many people want to like do this, do that, and they can't get grounded. And you know what? They can't even write out a goal. 42% of people who actually write a goal out are more likely to achieve it. But our society is so fast paced. We're moving, we're going here, we're going there. We don't stop, sit down and think. So the best thing I can give somebody is just settle down, sit down and figure out what you're good at and build from there. I cannot believe you just said that because amazingly, right? When I go out and do motivational speaking, mm -hmm. it's called focus, figuring out consistent, unique strengths. I think you and I should go on the road together. Absolutely. Let's go book something together. Absolutely, let's That's do it. I mean, your energy is great. I oh love my it. Gosh, your energy is great as well. Marcus Ogden, thank you very, very much for joining us. Wow. There you go. Marcus, Donna, it's figuring out your consistent, unique strengths. Pick one thing that you're really, really good at and just shine a light on that. We wish you all the best and we want to hear about your success stories. Stay tuned for more on Live It Up.